Hello and welcome back guys to another episode of the iOS pen testing series. I'm sorry it's been a while. Um, I'm not going to make excuses. I've just been super lazy. So anyway, let's dive back into it. So in this episode, we're going to look at bypassing root detection in the iOS app. We're going to do this in two ways, possibly a third if we have time. So the first way we're going to look at Ghidra uh, and we're going to patch the binary and then we'll reinstall the binary using the patched version, which will bypass the detections. Uh, secondly, we're going to use objection, which will be a nice sort of catch-all for the most generic methods of, of detection. That means that it will bypass all of the ones in the DVIA app with one command. Super simple, straightforward. Probably the best way of doing it is objection. Um, and lastly, if we have time and I can get it working because I've had a few issues with it, we're going to use Frida. And Frida is a great tool. Uh, we're just going to write a simple uh, Frida script, which is a JavaScript script that will hook into the application and bypass the one of the methods that we're looking at in the in the DVI app. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is download Ghidra. So open up Google and download Ghidra. It's a um, Ghidra is a reverse engineering tool gen, um, developed by the NSA. It was released, I think, a couple of years ago, 2018, that sort of time. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm sure it'll tell you somewhere on the page. But download it, install it. You need Java. I think it's Java 8 it requires. So download that if you haven't got it. I'm not going to do that because I've already got it on my machine. So extract the files to wherever you want. I'll chuck in the downloads. I've actually already got it in there. But hey. I'll do it anyway. Hey guys, Video Editing Mantis here. Um, I may have fucked up a little bit. The the, the recording uh, scene that I had on OBS didn't actually record me setting up Ghidra. So I've gone back and I've tried sort of doing it post-production which didn't really work, but I hope it's good enough for you to get the picture. Um, sorry about that. Okay, and then when you're in the Ghidra folder, just click on the Ghidra run, which is a batch file. Um, if you're on Linux, and I have ran Ghidra on Linux before, it's the same sort of thing, just clicking on the Ghidra sh script. All it does is it loads up Ghidra. It, it runs the Java, the, sorry, the Java command and it will load everything up properly. Right, so from here, let's create a new project. Once the project's been created, uh, we can just import the new binary file into Ghidra just by dragging and dropping. Okay, as we've discussed before, the PA file is just a zip file. So we can just open the file with 7-zip or whatever zip archiving you're using just extract it to wherever. I'm just going to do it to the de to the downloads folder. And then what we want to do is find the DVIA application binary and we'll chuck it into Ghidra as a code browser. Let it evaluate. This can take a long time so I'll speed this up. Right, now that's done, we can see all of the uh, the pseudocode and the, um, the assembly code that the application actually has inside it. Uh, the, the pseudocode on the right here, on this method here, uh, we'll get to that in a second. But th this is basically what we're going to be looking at. The, it, it's really powerful, it's not quite real code, um, and the assembly I mean, I'm not a reverse engineer by any means. Like, anybody that knows me knows that I suck at reverse engineering. So we're going to do the bare minimum here. And please, if you know a better way of doing this, even a, even if it's not within Ghidra, uh, if you know a better way of doing this, please let me know. I'm all ears. I, I, I really want to know how to do it. So please leave a comment down below just, just telling me how you do it. Um, alternatively, I'm on Discord. I'm on Twitter. I'm on pretty much everywhere. Just, just hit me up. Let me know how it's done. 
Uh, so anyway, let's let's do it the way I know so far. So in here, let's go into search and search site, and we'll go into program text. And if we just look for Cydia.app, so a lot of application, a lot of iOS applications will look for things like slash bin slash sh or slash bin slash bash. Uh, they'll look for slash applications slash Cydia.app. They'll also look for things like your root ID, your, your get UID. Um, and that's what I can think of off the top of my head. But there, there are a list of them. I'll try and leave a, a link in the description to a website that has a, a good list of them on there. But anyway, let's look for Cydia.app. And here we have found a reference to it. So if we just double click on this, sorry, if we double click on is jailbroken, it takes us to there. And that is what's on the right here. So if we look through here, we can see that it's looking for some stuff. So it's looking for mobile substrate. It's looking for Cydia. It's looking for bin slash bash, looking for SSH, uh, apt, jailbreak.txt. Yeah, and so on. And, and private uh, slash private slash jailbreak.txt. So what we can see here is it's looking for a mul it's looking for a number of things and it will if if it finds any of those things it's going to not run the application or in our case it's going to just alert saying that the the app is jailbroken. I've had a lot of different cases where the application will either just not run, it'll load up, it will detect that it's it will detect that it's um jailbroken and then it will close itself. Uh, the other times is it will limit the functionality. So, for example, a banking app, it might let you log in or something, but it won't necessarily look, it won't necessarily get all your data, or it might just show you the login screen, or as I say, some apps just shut it down completely. So that's where we really want to bypass. We, we want it so we can run an application on a jailbroken device. So anyway, in this, in this uh, method here, in jailbroken detection is jailbroken, we can see that local 11 is the check. It's the check variable, and if any of these checks match whatever the call is, or in this case it would be this one here, um, then it will match, and then it will return whatever it is, whether it's true or false. So what we can do is look for local 11, and we can just rename it. That's not the rename button. I can't remember what the rename button is. Oh, it's just out. I'm not reading. Okay. I will just call this to is jail broken. And this is entirely optional. Uh, it's just purely just for aesthetics, really, just for readability. So we can see here that all these checks check whether it's jail broken, and we just want to flip the value. So if, for example, where's the easy one? Start here, let's go this one here. So if mobile substrate is found, then it will return jailbroken as one. Sorry, it is jailbroken one. So all we really want to do is we just want to go through here. We just want to find the location in the in the assembly. So if you click on the variable, it will jump to roughly where it is. Now this isn't always right because it might be a few uh, calls before where it's been declared. So here, w8 is value of 0x01, zero zero or 0x1, zero sorry. And all we want to do is patch instruction, which is control shift G. Wait for a second for this to load. There we go. And all we want to do is change it to 080. Zero zero. Control Shift J, do that as well. There you go. So now you can see here it just marks it that it is jailbroken as zero. And then we just want to do this for all the cases. So if you find an is jailbroken in here, uh, a lot of them will be down here, so it's jailbroken zero. Otherwise, it's one. But actually, we just want to change these to be zero. All 
Right, and then finally is jailbroken is one, and we can change that to zero. Right, and that's all of the checks, I believe. So we've got is jailbroken zero, 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 zero. Um, and I believe that's it. Um, okay, and now we need to use a patch. Well, we need to use a plugin called Patch Binary. So if we go up to here, ah, script manager, of course. So we want to go into here and we want to go into Chrome. Okay, so the add on is called Ghidra Save Patch. And it's relatively simple. You just want to download the code. I'm just going to download it as a zip. We can extract it into the same location. And then within Ghidra, and within the script manager, we just want to add a new script. That was the wrong button. Never mind. So just want to add a new script. And it's, uh, I think this one's Python. Yes, it is Python. Uh, and this is save patch.py. Where is it? Just open it with an IDE or a text editor and just grab all the code and chuck it straight into the thing there. We just click run. That'll save it. So if you just make a note of if you make a note of the start address. Which is say this one here. I mean, you could do the entire, you could do the maths behind it, but I'm not going to. And if we go down, we find the return address, which is there. Because now if we click run, start of patch is there, and end of patch is, we'll just write it down, 101, 160, 734. Oh, patch size by sorry. Um, I'm just going to give it something that's massive, bigger than it actually is. No, this should be fine. Uh, just want to go into downloads again. Patch DVIA. And I'm not sure whether that actually worked. Yeah, they did. Okay, cool. So, literally, all we have to do now is upload it to the iPad. Uh, let me turn the iPad on. And if I just open Putty, let's just change this so it's a bit easier to read for everyone. And appearance, and we want to change this to change it to eighteen. There you go. Right, and now we just need to go to the DVI application. So I like to rename. I've already done it on this one, but I like to rename the old binary just to make sure that there's nothing going on. So what we'll do is we'll just move DVIA v two to DVIA v2 old 2. Yep, my naming conventions are brilliant. Thank you. I just need to upload the, the patch binary. Which is already in the right folder, which is nice. Uh, so it's in downloads, there's patch DVIA, so we chuck that up. DVIA dash V2. So we just rename the file to the to the original file. So the the, uh, the application will run. 
Right, so once you have it uploaded and you've changed the name of it, all you need to do is change the permissions to have an execute flag. So that's just chmod plus x and then dbiab2. Right, so now I'm going to load up the iOS app in on the, on the iPad. And just to show you that the application is now at least one of the challenges, which I believe is challenge two, will be bypassed. Um, the reason we did challenge two was simply just because it's the easiest one to show you in Ghidra. So jail one, jailbreak test one, it says device is jailbroken, but jailbreak test two says that it's not jailbroken. Okay, and that's as easy as that with, with Ghidra. Right, so now I'm gonna move over to the Linux machine and I'm just gonna show you how you do it with objection. You could run it on on Windows, but my Windows machine isn't really set up for pen testing. So I'm gonna move over to the to the Linux machine. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, now we're on our Linux machine. I'm going to load up objection and right, that's done. So I'm just gonna load up the DVIA application just so objection has something to hook into. Um, and let's do the same way that we've done it the past few times. There we go, and it's pro. Uh, in fact, we'll just there we go. Now we're hooked in. So the easiest way of doing this, and honestly, it's so easy. I don't know why more people don't use objection. It's it's a fantastic tool. Um, so all we have to do is type in iOS space jailbreak disable. And then it's done. So now we can check in all of our challenges there and they are all saying not jailbroken. And it really is as easy as that. That's it. I, I couldn't think of an easier way of doing this. Um, but it's super effective. As I say, it won't, it's not a catch all. If, so, if, if a developer has put in a special check, then objection may not be able to catch it. But for, for most use cases, it's fantastic. Okay, so I didn't expect this video to get this long. It's already at 18 minutes. Um, I think we're going to leave the Frida section to another video, a separate video just for Frida. Um, I think it deserves that as well. There's a lot to go over. Um, so for now, I'm just going to cut it here. And if you have any questions or if, if you have any comments, please, please leave them down below. Um, like this video if you liked it. And yeah, have a great day. Stay safe, everyone. Cheers.